Hello everyone, my name is Impractical and welcome to Sonic Rumble, or to be exact, the beta of Sonic Rumble. That's right, I have been lucky enough to be selected to take part in the beta. Now, again, this video will be covering everything that the beta had to offer and display for us to see, and it's going to give us an idea to look at what the final product may be, but not actually reflect the final product entirely. Again, my quick disclaimer is all footage, gameplay, and everything you're going to see is from the beta, so it will not be the final product at the end when it's scheduled to release in winter 2024. But again, I will give my complete review at the end. I would like for all of you to just take part, enjoy. If you're looking for timestamps or something specific, again, look in the description. But also, I'd like to know that after this intro, we're going to be going straight to the opening cutscene, so do enjoy that. Again, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and comment down below your thoughts on this review. All right, we're going to be going over the menu. That's right, everything that's in the menu and all the windows and options, shops, customization, profiles, all that stuff. So we're going to be starting with the menu profile. Now, again, this is where customization is at its basic. You're going to be seeing icons and backgrounds. Now, a lot of these I were able to unlock by completing certain challenges, and a few of them were because of certain winnings. That's right, because I was leveling up my ranking, I was able to get more backgrounds and other icons as well. What makes this more of a fascinating experience is how tied it is into other facets of the game. For example, we have emblem ranks. That's right, emblem ranks. Now, the good thing about emblem ranks is that you get to earn these emblems when you become first place. That's right. When you complete all three rounds and you become first, you will earn one emblem rank. That's right. And that emblem rank will be stacked on upon each other. Depending on a certain number of you unlock, you'll get different tiers and will be upgraded to the next rank. The higher rank the most rewards you're going to get at the end, and it's also a display of bragging rights of your total wins in-game. Right over here, we have the shop. Now, this is where you're going to get the most of your customization for your characters. I have not seen anything here with premium currency. Again, that may be subject to change, but here in the shop, everything was made accessible for beta players, where you get to purchase it with rings. Now, the avatar characters are free dailies that you'll be able to pick up. Now, think of Sonic Forces, because that looks like where some of these avatars come from. Now, when you do unlock a avatar character, it would be replaced with rings. So it does get harder to complete the entire set of avatars the further you go along. But as you can see, there are a lot of options to customize and purchase. Again, these were accessible through us by purchase of rings, something we naturally collect in game. So expect a lot more customization in the future release. Okay, moving on to the battle pass. Now, this battle pass is chock full of a lot of things that can set you up. So if you weren't able to completely play the beta excessively, at least you'll be able to get some emotes, some characters, and some stickers and skins through the battle pass. Now, this premium pass we were able to get through by completing challenges to earn the premium currency, which I assume is red star rings. Now, this was made pretty accessible to us. I can't say the pricing will be reflected in the final product but again this is what we have to offer and give you an idea of what is to come in the game moving on to stage challenges now stage challenges are where we were able to earn our red star rings to unlock the premium portion for the battle pass now these challenges can run through a simple hey make it to the end of the goal within a time frame or survival and make sure you outlast and survive before the time is up 
Now, I gotta say, some of these challenges were very easy, especially the ones where you just had to run through the goal. But again, these are the normal challenge battles. The hard mode, on the other hand, are something completely different. You're talking about having an excessive amount of obstacles just to get through to the end. And a lot of it had me barely making it. Now, I am impressed with these challenge modes, and I think they add a nice variety and a good single player option if you don't feel like playing online. And it's a good way to get premium currency for free. As you can see, we have other modes in the game, not only challenge battles, but there's ring survival and not available, but squad battles as well. We also have a custom match option, and onto the right, you're gonna see that there's additional space for us to have more modes added into the future. So. I'm more interested on what they have planned further out with the game and what else they plan to include with it as well. All right, let's talk customization. All right, the customize option is extensive. Not only do you have skins, emotes that you can customize with your character and display your individual style, you also have buddies that you get equipped with you that are flow along by your side during the race. Stickers are a good way for you to express your emotions during the middle of a match. And not to mention you have trail effects. You also have pre-match poses. You also have victory poses for when you win. And you have something called air tricks, which haven't been shown at all in the beta and I'm interested to see how this looks at the end. Okay, let's break down controls. Obviously, this is a mobile game, so there's going to be a lot of touch controls on display at all times. Now, what makes this interesting is that the controls were obviously right there. You're going to see that some of them reflect way for you to do stickers, emotes, double jump, actions, and also your attack. Now, yes, you do have an attack option, but you have to unlock the power up to attack. Now, what makes this even more fascinating is the fact that there's actual controller support for this game. That's right, controller support, which is my favorite option to play with. On screen, you'll see the controls display that I were able to test and use to see what works. I've used a Backbone, Joy-Cons. I've also used a Xbox One controller. I've even used a Gilly Kit Gong, a Gilly Kit Kong 2 controller that I have as well, and a PS5 controller. Now, all these options do work pretty well the entire time I played with my backbone because it was more comfortable for me. But I will be displaying the control configuration on screen so you guys can see how it actually works by using an Xbox One controller for reference. So, of course, your left Joy-Con stick will be for movement as you'll be moving your character around. The A or X, depending on the control you're using, will be used for jump and double jump. The B will be for your action buttons to break objects, chests, and so on and so forth in the game. And the Y and D pad is how will you use your stickers so that we can display your iconic stickers in game pretty easily. Now, if you're wondering about emotes, that's pretty easy. That's just X and the D pad itself. A lot of players I've talked to did mention that they didn't know what was the attack option. That would be your trigger buttons R2, RT, depending on the game, or even RZ as well. If you're wondering about camera control, yes, you can control the camera in the middle of stages, but you'll have to disable it in the settings for auto camera. That way you can manually control it with your controller. Okay, so let's go over the gameplay. Now, gameplay is pretty straightforward. You have to collect the most rings to win. Now, that's not a hard objective to complete, but you're gonna see it can be pretty difficult when it comes to the challenges you may face ahead. Now, each of the stages have its own obstacles to tackle, and you're gonna have to be dealing with a lot and also get used to multitasking because it's gonna get pretty crazy and hectic. You're gonna find yourself sweating by the end of it as much as I did. Now, I was able to win a few matches, but it was pretty intense. I honestly don't know how I survived most of my matches, but I'm glad I made it through. We're gonna start with gameplay round one. Okay, I'm gonna be showing all the levels that are available, at least for some variety, so you guys have an idea what to expect. Round one is mostly just a run stage. That's right, run. So the objective is to make it to the goal, and your placement will determine how much bonus rings you get at the end. As you can see, there is a lot of platform you're gonna have to navigate, and a lot of tricky turns to get through. It can get pretty crazy, and you can end up being tripped up by other players. Again, an intense game mode, especially when the objective is to collect the most rings and you're trying to make it to the end. Now for round two, this one has different game modes within it. You do have a team-based game mode where you'll be working with other players. Again, out of the eight players in your team, only six has to reach the goal. And it gets, again, pretty nuts because you're gonna have to work together with other players to make it down here. And those eight will be the ones with you making it to the third round. Now, that's not to say that it is completely impossible, but you're going to be frustrated like I was because Frozen Factory is another team-based game mode that is 
well, something straight out of hell. I'm going to be honest with you on that one. This one is a nightmare of a game mode. As you can see, it gets pretty chaotic with all these lasers. You're trying to break your teammates out of their ice cubes and then knock the enemy's ice cubes right off the ring. And again, an intensive game mode that is pretty chaotic. I do love it because the chaotic nature does add a lot, especially to this party style game mode. But as you can see, this ice is unrelenting because as soon as I break out, I get caught in it right again. Onto the survival stages in round two. The survive stages are very intense. You're gonna find yourself having a lot of close calls and being very sweaty at the end of it because guess what? That thing is right behind you. That's right. In this stage, the giant chopper is going to be chasing after you, and you're going to have to try to survive until eight players are eliminated. And there is no end in sight because this will keep on going until eight of them are eliminated. Now, we do have another survival stage for you guys in the beta, and that is the Death Egg Robot. That's right. You're going to have to avoid them on this platform and try to survive. Now, this game mode gets pretty nuts because guess what they added attack items so not only do you have to dodge the egg robot you got to be careful of other players and you will have enemies spawning in the middle of this platform as well so you will have some of the egg bots spawning in here and it can get pretty chaotic if you're not paying attention to what's going on i mean just look how i'm running around on screen it's pretty crazy there's a lot to actually manage and keep track of as you're playing Okay, let's talk about the hunts. That's right, hunts. So these hunt stages in round two are pretty interesting. The simple concept is you gotta make flowers bloom. The bigger the flower, the more points you get. And by the end of it, you will have a ranking set up. So guess what? The higher you score here, the more rings you will receive at the end. Now this is a good round to play catch up when it comes to rings. Now round three is where you will make or break. This is where you get your W or your L. Why? Because you just survive all two stages and you're here at the final stage and you have to try to win this. Now there's a lot of catch up mechanics involved in the round three for you to be able to make it from last to first place, especially depending on how you plan it out. But you will see on screen, these kind of modes get intense because all of it is a ring battle. That's right. Everything here is a ring battle. There are plenty of stages with action items. You're going to see this ice stage giving you, again, speed boost. You're plowing through the snow pretty quickly. And you also be given attack items so you can attack your other opponents. Again, rings is the name of the game. So you have to collect as many rings as possible. And this is your final chance in order to get first place and get a win. Now, I will say this, though. Your hands are going to be pretty sweaty. Why? Because these modes are intensive. I find myself playing this very heavily because of the fact is these final rounds are nothing to joke about. You have to come up with your own decisions on whether you're trying to get rings or get ahead. It's an entire balancing act. And especially the build up to round three is pretty nuts because if you think of all the other two stages prior, rings are what you need to determine the winner at the end. So you have to choose whether do I get ahead or do I get more rings? Because at the end, the amount of rings you have can either set you up for winning or set you up for a loss. Now, that's not to say you can't catch up because you definitely can catch up pretty easily in the third round. But it is pretty difficult and you're going to find yourself fighting for your life in order to get that W. The stages on screen that you guys have been seeing so far are a wide variety of stages for round three, each of them basically having the same concept, either obstacles of collecting rings and then getting attack items or fighting a boss just to make it through to get additional rings. But at the end of the day, the goal is the same, collect the most rings in order to win. Now the obstacles will be varied and change for change and the only difference that I can say is in one of the other stages, which is mostly a race stage. The further you are ahead, the more rings you get. This stage is entirely different. As you can see, it's mostly based on the fact of races. All right, now it's finally time for the review portion of this video. Now, there's a few things I gotta say. One, this game is beautiful. Visually, it looks amazing and stunning. Reminds me a bit of Sonic Lost Worlds. The art style is kind of similar to that. I do love how the characters have their little chibi aesthetics. Some folks were kind of convinced this will be more closer to Sonic and Friends art style, but the current art style really fits for mobile titles. And I think it's a great way to show off this game. Another thing is what this game comes with. You've seen a lot of customizations I've shown you so far in this video, the options, the feature, there is controller support, and all these things actually give you a nice compact title that you can enjoy on the go.
For Exotic Game, everything on screen that you guys have seen in this video actually summarize, hey, this looks like a Sonic game from sound design, from effects, to even just the visuals and customization just scream Sonic. But that's where I draw the line. Yes, it looks and feels like Sonic just from aesthetics alone. Yes, the sound and music is very much Sonic, but the gameplay doesn't feel like Sonic. The biggest complaint factor that many have, including myself, is the speed of this game. Oftentimes when you're either in the rail grinds from transitioning from one section of the stage to the other, or using boost pads, you'll find yourself moving as fast as you would in any mainline or mobile title of Sonic. But that's just it. That's when the game feels like Sonic the most is when you're going through those boosts, when your character is sped up. When it slows down, it takes away from the overall feeling. The other issue is the fluidity of controls. I felt other titles of Sonic games, even older platformers of his going back to Sonic 1, 2, and 3, having a much tighter control when it came to platforming. Oftentimes it felt stiff, difficult to control, and a lot of the touch controls weren't really as responsive as I would like them to be. Now for controller support, there was no visual indication or any cues or not even the tutorial to let you know that yes, controller is supported. I, not sure when controller support was put into this game. It probably was put before even the beta release, but I had to dig through the Discord until a moderator mentioned to me that yes, there is controller support for the game. And even then digging through the settings, I wasn't able to confirm any way to configure change or find out what buttons are mapped to what action. I had to figure it out while playing through the rounds. I'm not sure if it's a connectivity issue or anything else, but my backbone was really responsive and quick, and I felt like it was more intuitive than using the actual touchscreen controls. Now, when it came to my other Bluetooth controllers, I felt like there was a bit of delay, and that could have been due to the Bluetooth connectivity. Interesting enough, I was able to get two of these invitations, one for me and a family member. They played on an iPad while I played on my Galaxy S22. Now I find it pretty interesting because in my S22 mobile, it was pretty smooth. I didn't notice any stutters or latency, but I did notice it with the iOS version. Not sure if this is specific to iPad alone or depending on the age of the model iPad I have, which is from 2020. But at the same time, it was weird to see that there was stutter on one device, but no stutter on the other. Now let's talk about stages. Overall, these stages were beautiful. I had a great time. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I won't front, I'm not gonna pretend. I had a great time playing this game. The stages felt amazing. My biggest complaint was in one stage in particular, and that is for round three, the Star Carnival ring battle stage. Yes, it was the final stage clip that I shown in my round three. That stage is mostly based on a race. You have to get ahead. The further you are ahead and getting laps, the more rings you get. To me, that stage felt completely one sided. I had many matches where if I just started that round being in first place already, I stayed in first place. It was very difficult for other players to catch up to me. But I have also been on the receiving end where I was trying to catch up to whoever was in first place at the start of the round and I was unable to because there was barely anything for me to do to catch up. There was one egg robot I had to depend on towards the stage and that's when they started to add other gimmicks into the stage and you had yourself that one egg bot that had a javelin. That one attacking it twice and collecting rings was able to get me ahead of the first place competitor or at least be close enough to catch up to them. To me, this was the only mode that I felt wasn't balanced enough for everyone. And I hope they do tweak it in the future so that way it has a more better playing field or a better way for other players to catch up that aren't in first place. In the end, this is a beta and I can't take it as a final say so for it being the final product. So honestly, I will give this game beta what it for what it is. It's a solid seven out of 10. It's a really good solid mobile game. Again, this is a beta and this game is slated to be released in winter 2024. So I can't grade it too harshly, but I can say for what is here present in the game, you're gonna have a great time playing it. It's a fun game and a good way to pass the time, but for it to be a Sonic game, they're gonna have to improve the speed and tweak on the controls, especially the reactions when it comes to the platforming sections. Now, that is all that I have mostly for complaints or my opinions when it comes to the game. But I got to say, I've really played the hell out of this beta and I can't wait for them to come up with another beta pretty soon. Moving on to the battle pass and the shop, I really like it. They had a lot of good visuals. They had a lot to offer and it felt 
you know, pretty good. I think the biggest contributing factor was the fact is that I had no money to put down into this and I was able to get red star rings for free. That's why I feel so positive towards it. And I really, really, really implore them to keep it that way. You need to make the battle pass accessible to your free to play players and make sure that they're able to earn those premium currencies in a free to play manner that allows them to again benefit from those battle passes if they were to change up their pricing model or make it a little bit egregious i wouldn't agree with it and i believe that could just ruin the overall experience of the game now i made all my points with them about this in the survey and i hope they keep things as simple as it was in the beta especially that free-to-play accessibility with the premium currency but again for the upteen time this is a beta so we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but that's the best thing. You guys can give your input to the team and they do listen and review it. And we have actively seen it. If you're interested in joining the beta or want to be a part of the next upcoming beta, if they do make one, then I recommend you join the Sonic Rumble Discord server. Join that server and you too will be able to give your input or sign up for a beta if they do come out with another one. Now, the moderators in that server haven't ruled out that there won't be another beta session, but it's very possible and likely considering the feedback that many of the players give. I hope you guys enjoyed this complete guide to Sonic Rumble and my overall thoughts and opinions. Please comment down below and share your thoughts with me as well. I would love to hear from you guys and what you think. And I'll be answering all of these questions again in my comment section on a Thursday video. So until next time, bye bye.